at the very outset let me tell the viewers this lesson like its first part is highly technical so listen carefully and listen again and again it is going to be the basis for most of our discussion on isoquant your feedback will be highly appreciated okay with this we shall go inside the lesson marginal rate of technical substitution of labor for capital can also be defined as the ratio between marginal product of labor and marginal product of capital why when a producer slides down along an isoquant from left to right the number of units of capital falls its marginal product increases and the number of units of labor increases its marginal product decreases this tendency keeps the total output of all the combinations in an isoquant to remain at the same level how these are the two questions for which we are going to find answers we know marginal rate of technical substitution of labor for capital is equal to delta k by delta l we shall start from here but before that bring to your memory what all you have already learned in law of variable proportions it is so simple when more and more units of a factor is employed its marginal product will diminish here one additional thing that you have to know is what will happen to marginal product if units of a factor are dropped from production of course the reverse will happen that is marginal product will increase this is going to be the basis of our today's discussion well let us make use of the combinations given in the table part 1 of this series to begin with the producer uses the combination b to produce 100 units of output to produce the same output he tries the combination c with 4 units of labor and 6 units of capital in forming this combination he replaces 3 units of capital with 1 unit of labor the marginal rate of technical substitution of labor for capital is 3 the slope of the curve in this range delta k by delta l is also 3 so marginal rate of technical substitution of labor for capital is equal to delta k by delta l this already we know how many units of capital are taken out 3 units then delta k is 3 capital's marginal product is 9 units it means the reduction in total output due to a reduction in one unit of capital is 9 units but 3 units of capital are dropped then total fall in output is delta k into marginal product of k 3 into 9 27 the output falls by 27 units it is 100 minus 27 73 units the producer adds one unit of labor in the place of 3 units of capital labor's marginal product is 27 units the increase in labor is one unit then increase in total product is delta l into marginal product of l 1 into 
So, output increases by 27 units. The total output after one unit increase in labor is 73 plus 27, 100. Thus, total output remains unchanged. From this, it follows the fall in total output delta K into marginal product of K is equal to increase in output delta L into marginal product of L. This is how we get this equation. Let us rewrite this equation by taking delta L to the left hand side and marginal product of K to the right hand side. We have delta K by delta L equal to marginal product of L by marginal product of K. We know delta K by delta L is the slope of the isoquant. It is equal to marginal rate of technical substitution of labor for capital. Thus, marginal rate of technical substitution of labor for capital is equal to the ratio of marginal product of labor to marginal product of capital. Yes, we have answered the first question. We shall turn to the next question. The producer uses combination D, which consists of 5 units of labor and 4 units of capital. Here, he drops 2 units of capital and uses 1 unit of labor in its place. The marginal product of capital is 12 units. The fall in output due to withdrawal of 2 units of capital is delta K into marginal product of capital 2 into 12, 24 units. After a fall in output, the total product is 100 minus 24, 76 units. This is compensated by an increase in output by increasing labor by one unit. Marginal product of labor is 24. Its total contribution to output is delta L into marginal product of labor 1 into 24, 24. After an addition of one unit of labor, the total product is 76 plus 24, 100 units. The total product remains at 100 units. Note, units of capital is reduced from 6 units to 4 units. But marginal product of capital increases from 9 units to 12 units. Units of labor is increased from 4 units to 5 units. Its marginal product decreases from 27 units to 24 units. What is true with the combination D is true with combination E which contains 6 units of labor and 3 units of capital. This combination is formed by taking away 1 unit of capital. Capital's marginal product is 18 units. Reduction in output is delta K into marginal product of K, 1 into 18, 18. The total product is 100 minus 18, 82 units. But labor is increased by 1 unit. Labor's marginal product falls from 24 units to 18 units. It adds delta L into marginal product of labor. 1 into 18, 18 units of output. The total product is 82 plus 18, 100 units. Total product remains unchanged. What is to be noted here is this. When number of units of capital decreases as 9, 6, 4 and 3 units, 
its marginal product increases as 9, 12 and 18. When the number of units of labor increases as 3, 4, 5 and 6 units, its marginal product falls as 27, 24 and 18 units. It paves the way to compensate the reduction in output by increase in output. This exactly is the reason for the producer to part with less and less units of capital to employ one additional unit of labor and all the combinations of isoquant yield the same level of output. Our discussion ends here. We shall meet in the next video lesson.